Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a video explaining why I've decided to try for a VBAC rather than have a repeat c-section for my second birth. I found these types of videos really helpful when I was making this decision and um, I hope that this will help you and I'll just kind of share my perspective with my first birth and how that's going to inform my second birth and uh, I hope you like it. So I guess I'll just get right into it. So. <clears throat> Um, definitely my first birth, I did not want to have a C-section, obviously. I don't think many people go into their first childbirth experience, like, knowing they want a C-section right off the bat. I mean, I'm sure some people might, but, um, I definitely didn't, and I don't think, I think that I'm in the majority and, like, not wanting a C-section. But um, what ended up happening was uh, I went full term, so I ended up going into labor on my due date, and I was pushing and pushing and pushing, um, and if you want to see more kind of details about my birth story with Shepard, I have another video on my page, so go ahead and take a look at that on my channel. But. Um, I, long story short, I pushed for four hours. He wasn't coming out. Um, we knew he was going to be bigger than normal babies are, but we didn't know exactly how big Shepard would be when he was born. Um, but throughout the, the labor experience, it was clear that he was too big for me to push him out vaginally and we tried everything we tried a vacuum and eventually my doctor just said look I think we're gonna have to have a c-section but he was not breech um, he was not in distress um, I didn't have any kind of other sort of crisis situations during my labor it was really just we tried and tried and tried and he just wasn't coming out that way so um, why is that important? That's important because the reason for your first C-section often informs if you would be potentially a candidate for a VBAC or a vaginal birth after cesarean for any subsequent births after, after you have a C-section. And so, um, that being said, going into this second pregnancy, or like I guess once I found out I was pregnant for the second time and early on in my doctor's appointments, I was talking with my doctor about wanting to have a VBAC because I um, have looked up, I guess, a lot of research on the risks of having multiple C-sections and I w I'm someone who, I guess going into my second pregnancy was thinking I wanted a lot of children. Like I would love to have five kids which to me would be a lot, but um, uh, I think, you know, I, I definitely want to leave the door open for having more kids in the future, and if we potentially did want a third baby or a fourth baby and the second was a C-section, I was almost certain that, you know, baby number three and baby number four would have to be C-sections as well. Um, or would more likely to not be c-sections as well and so if baby number two was a c-section or is a c-section and so anyway that being said um i did not want the risks of having a lot more scar tissue from from multiple c-sections i didn't want the increased risk of uterine rupture from having multiple C-sections. I, um, there's other risks like this whole base of previous situation, which I do talk about in my, in another video on my channel, anatomy scan and base of previa, which I'll link down below. I'll link both that and Shepard's birth story down below in the description of this video, if you wanna check those out too for kind of more information. But they said that that potentially could have been caused by having had a C-section. They don't, 
attribute my C-section to be the cause of that because tons of people have C-sections and not a ton of people have vasa previas, but um, and and people will have vasa previas without having had C-sections before. But basically, having a C-section scar and the tissue that builds up um, in your uterus from the C-section scar uh, can interfere with implantation. So future pregnancies, there could be you know issues with implantation potentially, like. Um, placenta previa is more common, I think, if you've had a prior C-section um, and that kind of thing. And so that um, future C-sections, just increased risks, obviously not wanting to have to recover again from major surgery um, for having another C-section, uh, having a toddler currently and then thinking ahead to like having a a newborn baby and a toddler and having to take care of them while I'm also, you know, in my postpartum recovery as well, um, I think it would be a lot easier to do, to have a kind of a VBAC postpartum recovery rather than another C-section postpartum recovery. Um, so, so many reasons. Um, didn't want to have to be on the major painkillers. Uh, I really don't like taking medicine in general. I, I want my body to, you know, I want to know what's going on with my body. So I'm real, so if I have a headache, I'm someone who is really hesitant to even take Tylenol. I'd rather figure out why I have a headache, whether I'm dehydrated or, um, you know, have been staring at a computer screen for too long or whatever and fix the cause rather than just treat the symptoms of the headache, for instance. And I think that that sort of mentality towards taking pills especially and other kinds of medicine um so it has it kind of that's my mentality across the board in general when it comes to taking medicine and um so obviously not wanting to have to take the painkillers and um and all the other kind of things that you have to take when you have a c-section and so Anyway, um, it's not exactly a pleasant experience to have major surgery or to recover from major surgery, I guess. But um, so that was kind of those. Those are a lot of the main reasons, um, I guess. Other considerations and reasons I didn't want a C-section were I wanted to do immediate skin to skin after my first birth and I didn't get to do that because I was strapped down to the table obviously being operated on and I definitely would love to I still want to do skin to skin this time around um, so that's another or immediate skin to skin this time around and so that's another reason why I am sort of I'm wanting to do a VBAC um, what else what else would be helpful I guess on the alternative on the alternative to do a repeat c-section instead of a VBAC, there are definitely some pros associated with that as well um, and i know i've talked a lot about why my preference is for a VBAC rather than a c-section but um my <clears throat> kind of the i guess the other perspective is that with a c-section a scheduled or a repeat c-section it's scheduled so you know exactly when you're going to go in you can get a good night's sleep the night before you probably won't be in labor you know i mean unless like you just happen to be in labor and then have to like go in the hospital and do another like kind of a planned c-section but not at your scheduled time i guess if you go into labor like before the scheduled time um so it's really nice, I guess, that you can just plan everything out. You can get a good night's sleep before. Um, you can plan for childcare if you do have an older child. I mean, if you have had a C-section in the past and you're thinking about a repeat C-section, you probably have another child at home who has to be cared for when you go into the hospital. And so planning childcare for Shepherd would be a lot easier if we knew exactly when I was gonna give birth. Um, and so that being said, my doctor 
um, let me know that they, if I wanted to do it, I think they would do it, but the risk of uterine rupture is significantly higher when you do an induction for during a VBAC versus when you go into labor naturally and try for a VBAC. And so that was just something to consider. I'm really scared about uterine rupture. There was another YouTube video that I saw throughout kind of my um, decision-making process that this woman actually had, I think one of the worst case scenarios happen. Luckily, I think she's okay today. Her baby is okay, but she ended up having a uterine rupture and they had to remove her uterus entirely and it was just a total nightmare and so um, having an induction for your VBAC would one it would have those benefits of like knowing when you're going to go in and have your baby and so you can plan your child care and kind of anything else that you need to plan logistics wise um, but it increases that risk and so that's not something right now it's not something that I feel like I'm comfortable with I feel like there's a lingering feeling in the back of my mind like maybe I would do an induction if I really okay so my camera died so I switched my phone um but what I was saying was I there's a small part of me that feels like maybe I would still consider an induction um knowing that the risk is higher for uterine rupture within a VBAC situation in which you are induced. However, um, at this point, my hope and my plan for my birth is that I will have a, that I'll go into labor naturally prior to 39 weeks, um, which for me, 39 weeks is March 7th, and so hopefully you know, ideally sometime, ideally sometime between 36 weeks and 39 weeks, I would go into labor and, um, so my hope is that I would go into labor sometime between 36 and 39 weeks, so I guess between basically February 14th and March 7th, I think it is, and I would be able to successfully do a VBAC. So I think my fears associated with that are um, if my water breaks, because with my first pregnancy, I did not have really like any painful contractions. If I was having contractions, I just thought they were Braxton Hicks because they were not painful at all. And then all of a sudden on my due date, my water broke as I was like waiting to go in and be induced <laughs> for that. Um, for that birth and so uh, I really would love if my water did not break and that I had kind of more time I guess between when I first went into labor that I could you know coordinate with family and make sure that Shepard had childcare and like get everything ready and you know say goodbye to Shep and all that stuff prior to going into the hospital and um, so ideally, prior before, or I guess like, I would want a little more time in labor before, uh, things got really serious and labor was kind of like really down the road and because, I think because my water broke, um, by the time, almost immediately after I got to the hospital, I was having serious, seriously painful contractions and, um, so ideally that would not be the situation in a second break, but I think that is something you really can't control and so um, We'll just see and I don't necessarily think like every labor is exactly the same, but anyway, that's my hope um, So the plan is to have a VBAC. That being said um, Because my first baby was so big he was 11 pounds 9 ounces um, they thought that I probably had undiagnosed gestational diabetes in my first pregnancy, which um, if you don't know what that is, basically gestational diabetes is where your pregnancy hormones tell your body to be more insulin resistant. 
um, to a certain extent, and I think it's different for everybody, the kind of amount of insulin resistance you experience during pregnancy, if any. Um, but all of that is caused by your pregnancy hormones. So once you're not pregnant anymore, your body goes back to normal. And so they've been kind of monitoring me and I'm having to check my blood sugar levels and that kind of stuff. And so far, everything looks great. And um, the baby's size is perfect. He's right on the 50th percentile, which is wonderful because he also has a velamentous cord insertion. And so normally babies with a velamentous cord insertion don't get as much nutrition. So I feel like the kind of blood sugar stuff and my babies getting more blood sugar than they need has actually been really helpful potentially for this baby. I'm not a doctor, but I feel like this is God working and um, making, you know, making sure that this baby gets plenty of nutrition and, and plenty of energy to grow um, despite the problems with the cord. And so, um, that being said, another note, having a velamentous cord insertion does not preclude you from doing a VBAC. And so I spoke to my doctor about that as well. That's not an issue. Um, so that's good news as well. So basically we are all set to try for a VBAC unless if I were to go into labor and the baby was breech. Um, I think that that could potentially result in a, a potential like a repeat, un unplanned repeat C-section. Um, if for some reason between our last scan, which was at 28 weeks and, um, uh, you know, later down the road, whenever the baby is born, if he surges in growth, um, kind of like my first baby did, my first baby was pretty average until the later part of pregnancy. Um, so if that happens again and he's just really, really large, we may, we will probably end up doing a repeat C-section. Um, if there are obviously any kind of complications to the baby's safety or my safety, we will probably end up doing a repeat C-section, but, um, I guess kind of all negative forces of action, um, aside, we are seemingly good to go for a back. So anyway, um, that is, I guess, my experience. Uh, I know that everybody's experience is different in this situation, or not every single person's experience is like too terribly different, but I guess it really does depend on you and the reason for your first C-section. Um, if you are or are not going to be a candidate for a VBAC. And um, if you are, then I hope that kind of my perspective has helped to inform maybe if you were on the fence. I will definitely do an update. I'll be doing a birth vlog when I do go in to give birth to this baby, however it happens, I'll do a vlog. And then I will also do a recap birth story video so I can talk more about the details and kind of everything that happened um, if it doesn't come across in the first video. And um, so you will hear, and I guess also I'll definitely do an update video if the birth plan changes between now and when we go to give birth. So keep you posted on basically what the plan is and then what actually ends up happening and what my experience is um, because I know that you can go into it thinking, oh, I want to be back. And then obviously, you know, if the uterine rupture happens, like that woman whose video I saw, um, that was not part of your plan. And um, if you were pregnant as well and you had a previous C-section and are considering whether or not to do a VBAC or a repeat C-section, please let me know that in the comments as well. Let me know what you're thinking and why you're thinking that. Um, and I will see y'all in the next one.